miraculously. But the language in which it is said in your book, the Holy Ghost coming upon Mary, and the power of the Most High overshadowing her, and the Quran says, for God to be, he merely wills it, and they come into being. So if this is not the word of God, if this is an imitation, then I want to know from you that how can an imitation diamond be better than the real genuine one? You tell me. I asked this question to Reverend Duncan, the head of the Bible Society in Johannesburg. I said, between these two versions, I had occasion to go to the Bible Society, and I had a discussion with him, and when I explained to him the birth of Jesus according to the Quran, and when I asked the question, between these two versions, which would you prefer to give to your daughter? The Quranic version or the Biblical version, and the man bowed his head down in shame, and he said he would give, he would prefer to give the Quranic version. Now, I would like you to read this for yourself, and tell me, give me your comments, whether Muhammad wrote this book. Chapter 3, verses 42 onwards, the birth of Jesus. Account for it. How did this man go and put this thing down? The language, the sublimity of the language in Arabic. Incomparable. In English, most beautiful. And the sublimity of the message, that God Almighty for him to create anything. He doesn't need it to take a seed and plant it like men and animals. If no artificial insemination is required, he has got to will it and the thing come into being. A Jesus without a father, just like that. A million Jesuses without father, without mother, he's got to will it. A million universes for God to create, he wills it and they come into being. God does not have to take seeds and plant in, in other people's wives and daughters. Now, I would like you to tell me, sir, how can you account for this, these words that I have uttered, that being from anybody other than God? You explain that. You have something you want to bring up. I won't simply put it on record, but Basil did answer your statement. But that's that's the point, isn't it? I so have let, let it be on record that yes. that as Basil tried to deal with your problem, he did deal with it. Now, you may not accept what he said, but he in fact answered what you did say. Now you may take uh, it that way. Well, well, that's I mean, what he we said. All feel even we are in a similar situation, perhaps we might also want to feel. You know, like the wrestler, uh, this is a joke, you see. You know, in wrestling, I have been doing some wrestling when I was a young man, you know, all in. And you see, in wrestling I learned that when you floor a guy, you know, when you, you, it's for a fall. What you do is, is two shoulders like the ground. And that's a fall. And the referee, you know, he tries to put his hand between the two shoulders to find that both the shoulders, you know, for a few seconds are on the ground. That is called a fall. And a man was floored. And it was declared a fall. But the man said, but my leg is still up. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you know, leg being up, it can remain up, but the thing is... Now your question, your question asked this. It said, solve the problem of drunkenness. 20, right, 520, I got it here. It says here, for the father loveth the son, and showeth all things that himself doeth and he will show him greater work than these. He will show him that he may marvel. For as the father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the son quickened whom he will. For the father judgeth no man. Where is this greater than his father? Or here, greater work than his father? Here in verse, verse 20. What does it say? For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and greater works than these will he show him that he will marvel. Yeah, then he'll show him. Like he'll show him. Show him through who? Who? Yeah, so God, who's doing the works? Through Christ. No, who's doing the works? It is God. God. No. He's going through Christ. He says, I by the finger of God cast out devils. Right. So in Christ, so he's doing nothing. works. No, no, he's, doing, he's, he's doing nothing. As Peter testified, if you remember, in the book of Acts, you remember what he says? He says, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. What did Jesus do? Nothing. He says, but which God did by him in the midst of you, which you yourself also know. Who's doing the works? No. No, no, who's doing the works? So he says, is Jesus, uh, God is working through him. He is only a man who presses the button. Who is supplying the power? Why, why did they honor Moses and they tried to kill Christ? 
because according to your records, the man, according to your records, not only my records. Your record means your Bible. You see? I mean, according to the Quran, he respected his mother. He said, <coughs> He made me kind to my mother and not overbearing or miserable. But now, according to that record that you're holding in your hands, he is calling the learned men of the Jews. See, hypocrites. You generation of wipers. That's what they were. You white, whited sepulchers. You wicked and adulterous generation. Now, look, you don't gather honey with words like that. You're looking for trouble. You get trouble. Right. If you are going to talk like that, anybody, you are actually looking for trouble. You know, you're calling the learned men, wipers, you snakes, you, you adulterous people, you monkeys, you snake. Look, you are looking for trouble. So if you're looking for trouble, you don't have to wait very long. You get around the corner. This is, this is human nature. If you're looking for trouble, if you utter the words, that, the kind of words that are attributed to him, I don't blame the guys looking for trouble with him. You know, what we have got to come to, and we, we, we've jumped all around the horse today, uh, is that you can't believe in the Bible and the Quran also. Because they don't agree. Because if, if Christ's statements there are bad, as he deals with those people of what they really were, then God is bad too. Because... This book says, the, the Bible, Quran says, you see, if in, the Quran says... Now wait, now hold it. The Bible, in many places in the Old Testament, God speaks very straightforward to people and tells them what they really are. Now, your Quran may paint honey and sweet. For Jesus. For, He's talking about Jesus. Not just, wait a minute, now just hold it. No, about the Jesus. Bible, the Bible may paint a different picture. Of Jesus. Of, this, of God. No, no, book, no, 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 of now, Jesus. This book says he respected his mother. Can I carry on? No, no, look, please. You see, when you are making this statement, I have to correct you, because the Quran said, when I read it to you, the birth of Jesus, that he respected his mother. I think the Bible said he respected his mother. The Bible says that he insulted his mother. I don't think so. At the well, marriage feast. Say he right, I tell you. Two places. At the marriage feast at Cana, when they ran short of wine. Now, don't give me your interpretation. No, no, I'm giving you what ex actual words that Jesus used. And use your common sense. And he says, woman, what have I to do with Woman, he said, call his mother. Woman, what have I to do with you? My time is not yet. But now your inflection of voice makes it look like <laughs> a bad one, doesn't it? All right. Now, when his mother started searching for him, you know, when he, another occasion, when he's become world famous, great orator, great parable talker, so he's going around place to place delivering talks. And his mother and his sisters and brothers are going looking for him. And they follow him from place to place. Gwendolyn to Tongat, Tongat to Febris, and they're following him until they find him one place. The mother and his brothers and sisters, and they send a message. Perhaps this poor woman was too shabbily dressed to go before the public. So she sends a message that your, son, your mother and your brethren are waiting outside for you. And these words were whispered in his ears. And when he hears them, whispered, he says, who is my mother and who are my brethren? This is my mother and these are my brethren. Who? The same people out of whom one guy sold him for 30 miserable pieces of silver. The other man cursed, abused and swore him, Peter. And the, all the others left him in the lurch when he was most in need. All right. Now, what, what these, people, these people, according to your scripture, were preferable to Jesus than his own mother, the woman who carried him for nine months, who breastfed him for two years bought all the insults and the injury for him, changes napkins for him. Now that woman is counted for nothing. So who is my mother and who are my brethren? Now if your, I don't know how your wife would react to your, uh, your you child know, talking like that. You know, if or Jesus, the Indian people, I don't know whether they treat their mothers like that. You call your mother woman? You call your mother, is that what you call your mother? Woman? What do you say? Ma? Huh? You don't call her woman, do you? Mfas. You don't call her mfas. No Zulu will call his mother and father. This book is saying that Jesus Christ called his mother woman. And again, when the mother is looking for him, when your mother comes looking for you, you say, who is my mother? And who are my brother? These are my mother. And would you talk like that? Huh? The woman who carried you for nine months. So this book, my book says, no, he was respectful to his mother. Jesus talked.